Okay, so I think this is the start time, the 325. So let's get started. So my name is Song Jin. Just call me simply SJ. I prefer to be called in that way because it's easier to type and pronounce it. I'm working for Meta now and I'm the maintainer of a small Linux kernel subsystem called Daemon. And today in this talk, we will present Daemon in a nutshell and then more focus on sharing some real world usage of Daemon for optimizing their memory usage. So first of all, the notice. So all the things that we will talk here are uh, just our own opinions. Those because will be me and Hongyu here. He will introduce himself later. Um, and also, as I just mentioned, this talk will not uh, handle the internal mechanism or logics of daemon itself, but more focus on the real-world usage of that. So in overview, I will present the daemon in nutshell for about five minutes and then introduce three possible and real-world recipes and then introduce the daemon community about how you can uh, join in and participate and then finally summary and then q &A. So daemon in a nutshell. So what is the daemon? Um, can you raise your hand if you have heard about Daemon in corner at all? Okay, oh, not nobody, about three people. That's very impressive. It's still a very little and young subsystem in corner, so let me just introduce itself. So, in short, it is a in corner data access pattern snapshot generator. It informs which address range of the memory of the address space is how frequently accessed for how long time. For example, this screenshot here is the output of daemon user space tool, and that's exactly what daemon allows you to know. And also, it currently supports the virtual address space and physical address space, though it could be exp expanded in future. For example, you can show that the uppermost region that marked with cold it has not accessed at all for about 3 minutes and 47 seconds, and the second region has accessed about 55% of the time for about 0 nanosecond and 100% time for about 2 seconds, and in such a way you can show which region is hot how long, and vice versa. One of the characteristics of Daemon is its best effort overhead accuracy trade-off. It allows users to set the upper bound monitoring overhead as they want. And then, under the limit, it provides its best effort for providing best accuracy of the monitoring research using some adaptive mechanisms that I will not uh, touch in detail in this presentation. And from the real-world production usages that so far reported, it, they uh, commonly say that Daemon was using only about 3 to 4 percent CPU usage, though they were using that on real world products. And second characteristic of Daemon is its extensible design. So Daemon separates layers for its core logics and the more lower level logics for checking access to specific memory address and logics for specific other space, for example, for virtual other space and physical other space, there should be different handling logics, and they are in separate logic, and therefore, it can be extended simply for different other space and some more access check primitives. For example, we can think about extending daemon for another access check primitives that provided by CPU or specific device like GPU or CXL device. And also we can think about extending it for specific other space, for example, uh, file back, not file back, the memory cache files content or something more interesting. And final interesting characteristic of daemon is its core feature called daemons, which stands for daemon-based operation schemes. It's a core feature of daemon that allows users to specify to which memory region of a specific access pattern they have interest and therefore what memory operation action they want to apply to those. For example, we can ask daemon to find memory regions that not accessed at all for five or more seconds and then just reclaim those as soon as found. You can do that by using the daemon user space tool called daemon as the example command shows and then it will find the regions that not accessed at all for five or more seconds as marked on the screenshot and then page out those. And availability of daemon, from where you can use daemon. Daemon is currently enabled on kernels of major Linux distros, including 
Android, Amazon Linux, Debian, Fedora, Oracle Linux. And also Daemon provides the user space tool, which is for more human-friendly interface, and it is packaged for multiple packaging systems, including those of Arch, Arch Linux, Debian, Fedora, PyP, Raspbian, and etc. So that's it about Daemon itself. So as I mentioned before, the internal mechanism of Daemon is out of the scope of this talk. We will more focus on how others are using Daemon and how you can use Daemon for fun and real profit. So we will introduce three Daemon recipes or usages. And the reason why we are introducing only three recipes is that no one knows who are using Daemon for what purpose in what way, because it's just an open source project. And as long as it works fine, nobody reports. Even if it fails, some people kindly report that, but some people just ignore that and just thinking that, oh, that was just a mess. Never, never try that. Let's forget that. So we don't know who are using Daemon for what purpose, but Fortunately, by being the maintainer of the subsystem, I was honored to get some uh, news about usage of Daemon from some of the real-world products, and therefore we want to share our best knowledge usages of Daemon on real-world products. Of course, if you have some experience with Daemon already, or if you have some of your own recipe for Daemon, then please feel free to share with us. So the first recipe is accessage profiling and profiling guide optimization. So what we can do with Daemon is, as Daemon is the access pattern snapshot generator, you can use that for some of the profiling purpose. That is, you could record or get snapshot data access pattern of your workload using Daemon and you can also further record or snapshot some of the additional information that can be useful for your profiling purpose. For example, um, residential set size of the workload and total memory usage of the system and free amount of memory and also some uh, hot spot functions or code of the workload using perf or uh, some kind of memory profiler that available to you in other ways. And then, by, after collecting such a data point, you can visualize those using some kind of visualization tool. For example, you can draw the heat map of the access pattern using Daemon Geospace tool, or draw the flame graph using the puff tools, and also you can uh, plot working sets, how the working set size is changing by the time, or how, long, how many times working set size is in what size, and such a distribution like things. Based on that, you can get some insights for your workloads and for your usage for better understanding your workloads and systems. Of course, the profiling is not for only profiling, it's very fun, but you do profiling for making some changes and optimizations, right? And therefore you can make some optimizations based on the insights that you got from profiling. For example, from the Inside, you would be able to find which memory regions are hot and which memory regions are cold. And by connecting the information that you, can, you already got from the daemon with, uh, for example, a uh, trace of the memory mapping information that you can get from proc uh, mmap file uh, and the, your source code of the program, you will be able to find out which data and variables are mapped to the hot regions and cold regions. Based on that, you could protect or promote the hot data using MLAC system call or M advisor system call with huge pages, hinge. Or you could evict or demote the cold data using M advisor system call with page out hint or no huge pages hint. Not this is all, you can make any creative optimizations on your own you would be much more creative than I, so I believe that you could make some more interesting optimizations with these knowledges. So this is some kind of open uh, optimization approach, but uh, based on our experience, we have tried protecting hot pages using the MLAC system call under memory pressure, and we were able to find out it achieves about 2.3 times speed up under artificial memory pressure situation. Of course, that's under the lab environment though. 
And also, we are also maintaining a daemon user space tool called Demo for each usage of daemon. And we are currently working on extending the feature of daemon user space tool for this kind of profiling guide optimization to be more easier. And therefore, as of now, nowadays we are more focusing on this part and recently we have improved some more of the profiling part so that you can collect the hard data and memory uh, usage information like things uh, using not multiple profiler tools but only demo tool and then make some visualization all the things in one place like using the demo monitor dash dash draft type holistic, you will be able to find out holistic view of the memory access pattern and memory usage of the workloads and systems in real time. If you have interest, please scan the QR code. It will show you animated GIF. Okay, I will give you scanning time, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, 0 0.5, 0, okay. So that was the first recipe, which could be interesting, but not for real, real world product. The second one is for real, product, for real world product. That is called product reclamation. What is the product reclamation to explain that we should first explain about what is the reactive reclamation. That is the traditional and classical way of memory reclamation of the Linux kernel. That is, Linux kernel reclaims cold memory when memory pressure happens to give more free memory and reduce the memory pressure. And product reclamation is just opposite things. We want to find and reclaim cold memory even before memory pressure happens. The benefit of the product reclamation is that it can reduce memory foot print of the usual time of the computing workload without incurring uh, performance degradation because it will find and reclaim only cold pages. The second benefit is that it can minimize the performance degradation from direct reclamation that is under memory pressure when the reactive reclamation is uh, starting, then in, in severe case, it could result in direct reclamation which uh, just all which asks the process context to do the reclamation on its own before executing next user space code and therefore it could uh, incur some severe latency increase and more problems. Currently the product reclamation is known to be used by Google, Meta, Amazon and some more companies that I don't know the name. And each company uh, is using its own implementation of the product reclam reclam reclamation for their own usage. And in case of Amazon, they are using daemon-based implementation for memory auto-scaling, and that's what I will explain in detail today. So to go further about the daemon-based product reclamation usage in Amazon, we need to first explain about the business model of the memory auto-scaling. What is the memory auto-scaling that AWS is using daemon-based product reclamation for? In this business model, users just specify what workload they want to execute and what is the minimum and maximum memory requirement they uh, expect to need to be provided to run the workload. Then the service provider runs it somewhere, somehow, maybe somewhere up the cloud. There are many clouds. And then they can charge as they really used the memory just the classical definition of the cloud computing, right? And under the contract, the achieving high performance and low price is the, pro, is the service provider's duty for, for maximizing their resource utilization and also to minimize the cost of the users. And how we can implement this kind of memory auto-scaling? There could be two major different approaches. The first one is non-collaborative approach. That is, the host will somehow know which memory of guests are not necessary and then reclaim those and reallocate to other guests somehow. If it works well, it would be very good because it is transparent to guests. However, host would be not very easy to find out which memory of guest is really unnecessary. In opposite way, we can think about collaborative approach. That is the guest reports 
which memory of them is not really needed. For example, just letting the, letting the host know what pages are free and therefore can be reclaimed. In this way, we can minimize the performance degradation from host mistakes. And but this raises a question: What if the guests are not family, memory frugal? And therefore, the collaborative memory autoscaling approach of AWS is using the daemon-based reclamation for forcing the guests to be memory frugal. That is, they are assuming that the guests know they are running on the memory of committed systems, and therefore they ask guests to run daemon-based reclamation on their own. Then daemon-based reclamation will find cold pages and proactively reclaim those, and then the as a result of the reclamation, the guest system will have more free memory and the more free memory can be reported to the host so that the host can distribute more memory to other guests and therefore increase the memory utilization of the overcoming system. And so far, the AWS Aurora Serverless V2 is the one popular service that officially known as using daemon-based product reclamation for the purpose. And we are currently working on reinventing and redesigning the entire memory autoscaling thing based on daemon because the current implementation of the AWS Aurora Serverless V2 is using some kind of complicated kernel features at all from the user space in some complicated and not very ideally effective, efficient way. So that was the second recipe. And the third recipe is the CXL memory tiering, which are currently being used by SK Hynix. And from this point, I will move my mic to Hongyu Kim, who is working in SK Hynix for the recipe. Uh, thanks, Sonjie. And I'll switch my slide. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, Hi, uh, my name is Hongyu Kim, and I'm working at uh, SK Hynix. And then, so I'm going to uh, continue the session with uh, the daemon usage for CXL memory uh, with the HMSDK. And so, the first question is, why is what is CXL memory? And uh, the typical memory system consists of only the DRAM in their DIMM slots. There's, and uh, but the the CXL memory can be attached through the C, uh, CXL on a PCIe Express interface, just like this way. And there are some, some uh, pros and then the, you can uh, flexibly expand the memory uh, memory, and then uh, for both uh, bandwidth and ca uh, capacity expansion. And but the, there's an issue and then so the, the concern is the latency issue and then the latency is about uh, two times longer than the local DRAM. So we need to cover this uh, issue. And then so daemon is used to, uh, to cover this one. And then so that's why I'm calling it uh, daemon based tiered memory management. So the, uh, what is the HMSDK then? The HMSDK is to uh, uh, run the CXM memory efficiently. And then so it stands for the heterogeneous memory software development kit. And uh, at the beginning, and uh, so we can, it can be used to expand the bandwidth and the capacity and uh, so the it has a custom locator as well right. and but the, i'll only cover only the the capacity expansion use case and then so daemon is used to, to the detect a hot cold detection and then is demo c is used to for migration between the dram and cxn memory and uh, the memory memory access profiling is done via the daemon as i mentioned and the uh, demo c is the migration engine and uh, we, uh, uh, by helping the, the Sangje and this, so we have uh, uh, implemented uh, two uh, migration actions as well. The first one is migrate code, and then so it detects the cold, cold data and then demote the cold data to the CXM memory. And then the second one is migrate hot, and migrate hot detects the hot uh, pages and then so promote it to the faster DRAM uh, memory. To give you a better idea, the, there is a there is a DRAM, DRAM memory and CXM memory, and then DRAM is a, a large larger than the CXM memory in this case, and the, the CPU uh, accesses uh, DRAM directly, but the, to the CXM memory, and the, so we, it has to go to the the PCI Express 
that's a, uh, that that uh, makes the delay. And uh, so if we can uh, partially uh, partially allocate some memory, and uh, if you uh, we have uh, an interest about the the specific workload, and if the workload is allocated only in the DRAM, and then so. The, this is the uh, fastest execution case. And the second case is that if the workload is somehow allocated into the CXL memory only, and and this is the slowest case. And uh, the case three is the if the workload is uh, allocated in both DRAM and CXL memory, and this is the second uh, the third case. And the uh, daemon has uh, two different modes, and then so it has a virtual address mode and then physical address mode. If if we if we use the virtual address mode, and then it it uh, monitors only one single process, and, uh, and but uh, it's it's very difficult to uh, detect the hot cold only inside one single uh, process if the system has a huge uh, memory capacity, and then so you have to run uh, too many k daemon this to detect a. Uh, all, uh, to track all the processes inside the system. The, the second one is uh, the physical address mode, and in physical address mode, and uh, so we can run the only maybe two, uh, two, di uh, two different key demo Ds and uh, per each NUMA nodes, and then so we can do the system-wide uh, monitoring, and we can run the demo section separately. So if we use it this way, and so it's much easier finding cold data from the idle processes because uh, it's, it's, it's not very practical. Uh, all the all the processes in the system they are they are very cold. they are very hot. It's unlikely. So the the at the top and the demo is the user space tool because the demo provides uh, lots of uh, CFS knobs, and then so it's diff it's very difficult to handle all the CFS knobs. Uh, uh, using the echo, and then so the demo is the user space tool. And HMSDK, there is a HMSDK policy generator, and then so anyway, so demo provides a lot of, lots of uh, knobs. That's why, so we have to configure all the details, and then so inside our project, and then so we generate the po all the policies inside it. And then it generates uh, how the K demo these are uh, uh, activated. And then each each K demon D can run its uh, the migration actions, and there is a script inside the project. So the the this slide explains how how we use the this generation uh, policy generation script, and then this the name is a Gen Migpol, and then so which stands for the migration policy, and if if we I uh, want to uh, monitor the only the DRAM node, and then this is a no, uh, node zero, and the CXL memory is node one, and then that means the uh, demote uh, monitor monitor node zero, and then if there is a cold memory, and then demote it to the node one. And the second one is a uh, dash dash promote, and then one and zero means uh, monitor uh, node one, and uh, if there is a hot memory, and then hot data, and then promote it to the node zero. And then, so you can just generate the, all the details, in, uh, detail the configuration inside a single file. And then the usage is very simple. And then just to put the configuration file uh, to the demo, and then demo start HMSDK.yaml file. That's it. The, the this is the ex, uh, evaluation result. And then so, the. The, this is quite complicated, so I'll explain uh, one by one. And then, so y-axis is a uh, normalized execution time, and then the x-axis is a free space, a DRAM free space before uh, Redis loading. The, our, our evaluation is done via the, uh, with the Redis and YCSB uh, model. If the Redis is fully in, uh, located inside the DRAM, and then this is the base, fastest, uh, fastest case, and then that's the baseline. And so in this case, and then so you don't have to run demo, and then so the if you demote some memory of uh, Redis, and they'll be slower. And then if the Redis is uh, fully allocated inside the CXL, and then this is the slowest case, and then so this is uh, performance low bound. And so the the execution uh, evaluation result shows that the the slowdown is uh, eighteen point eight percent compared to the DRAM only. And so in this range, and then this is the performance range, and then so 
on, unless the workload is bandwidth hungry. So the next one is, uh, the, the question is that, so what about using the swap space inside uh, instead of uh, CXL memory? But we, we can use it without use, using the CXL memory. And then, so if there are some uh, memory pressure and then it can go to the swap device. But uh, this is not the scope of uh, uh, this evaluation because uh, that is, that'll be obviously much slower than the CXL, uh, CXL only. So uh, I will just show you the evaluation uh, based, based on the various memory pressure cases. So the, we can allocate uh, each cold data uh, this way and then some, and then in, in the graph and then from the left to the right and then so we can increase the memory pressure using these used memories in three different cases. And, and uh, in the first case, and then so some partial uh, uh, memory of Redis is allocated into the CXL and the performance is, is not, not that bad. In the second case, and then so red, half of Redis is allocated, in, uh, allocated into the CXL memory that makes the performance degradation. And if the most of the Redis is allocated into the CXL memory, and then that's, that is very slow. And the other cases are similar. And then it shows the, some linear pattern as the memory push goes on. And then so the, it goes slower, much slower. And the next case is that uh, if we, can, we can run the daemon. And then so from the used memory, and then we can detect the cold memory and then uh, demote it. And then we can detect the hot memory and hot data and then promote it. And then so overall, the red, more, more Redis uh, data is allocated into the uh, DRAM node. And then so that makes the performance uh, a bit better. And the next question is that the the demotion enabled, there is a demotion enabled flag and then for the tiered memory management. And in, if this flag is on, and then so instead of doing the swap out, and then so if there is a second tier memory, and then so it uh, demotes the mem uh, data to the second tier memory. If this is uh, uh, enabled, and then so we can, we can get a little bit more uh, better result because this is needed uh, uh, because uh, if there is a swap space uh, from the DRAM, DRAM, Numa, uh, DRAM Numa node, if there is a hot, uh, cold uh, memory pressure and then reclaim logic runs on, and then so it can directly go to the swap device. So to prevent this one, and then so we need to enable this flag. And uh, if the daemon is uh, always on, and then so the last one is the early daemon result. And then so in this case, and we can detect the cold, cold data and then demote it even before the Redis loading. And we can also detect the cold data and then so demote it again. Then after, some, after a while and then the Redis can be loaded. And then in this case, and then so our, our workload can be allocated more on the DRAM, DRAM side. But this is a more practical case uh, because uh, so just uh, turning on the daemon just before the workload is not uh, feasible and then so just the turning on the daemon always is, is more practical use cases. The result is uh, much better in this case. Uh, as you can see that uh, the result shows that the, there are some tendency uh, as we add more options and then the performance uh, gets better. And then in terms of the speed up in the worst case and then it shows the 12.9% of speed up. And uh, the last one is shows that the, all the details data, and then so I evaluated this result uh, after running about three or four days of execution, and then to get a better result. And so in this case, and then the last blue dots uh, default, and green dots uh, daemon plus uh, case swap D. And the last one is uh, the turning on the daemon earlier. And this shows that the remaining DRAM space, uh, frame spaces. And so you can, you can see that the each dots, uh, sh it has uh, 50 dots and so I evaluate, I, I executed the uh, each evaluation 50 times and then get the average. And as you can see from, for the default cases and so there is no pro uh, promotion and demotion. 
So if there is a memory pressure and the more data already goes to the CXM memory, it shows that the, the, the performance slowdown goes linearly. All right, so I, I missed something. And then so in the X axis, it is a CXL memory use, usage. So if it goes to the right and then it uses a more CXL memory and the X axis is a execution time. Yeah, so the lower is better in this case. And the green dust uh, goes to the, uh, from the top right to the left bottom. And uh, as you can see, the it shows it shows the some of the uh, performance gets better because of the promotion. And then the last case is the best case. So having this, and then, so we have a uh, release on uh, we have made another release. It's called the HMS case 3.0, and then it is uh, released today because uh, based on the Linux 6.11 because uh, we rely on this feature. Uh, from the 6.11 and because it was released yesterday. So this version is fully aligned with the open source community and then no more local patches included. So the for the bandwidth expansion, it is supported from 6.9 and it is supported from 6.11. This is our internal feature. And that's all. And then so I will give the mic, mic to the Sangje hand. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction of the SK Hynix usage of daemon. Yeah, so those are all the daemon recipes we wanted to share today. And in addition to that, I'd like to further introduce daemon community. So who is owning daemon? I'm the maintainer, but it's not owned by me or owned by my previous or current employers, Amazon or Meta. It is just owned by you, the community. Please get your ownership and make some control on your own. And actually, a number of daemon features, including some features for helping memory tiering, has was the research of the common discussions between us and SK Hynix, and also there are more features that have made in such a discussions between different companies and peers. So we have a mailing list that is daemon at least.linux.dev. Of course, that is the primary ch communication channel for the community. You can post any questions, feature requests, ask some discussion and st start discussion, add some comments, and do whatever you want and send patches. We also have a tool for helping sending mail and participating in discussion on the mailing list for people who are new to kernel development and therefore not very familiar with mailing list based communication. We are committed to support that for at least for demo community. So if we have any problem at sending mailing list, sending mail to mailing list, please try to use that and complain to me if it doesn't work for you. And also we have the archives in law.com.org Nevertheless, though the mailing list is the primary communication channel, please don't hesitate at just sending personal mail to me or sending DM from the social.com.org, Fediverse, or LinkedIn, wherever, if you have any problems. And also, we are having co regular community meetups called Beer Coffee Chat, that is a, a meeting series for any informal chat. We are having regular bi weekly meeting series based. We are, that is held on Google Meet. One is for open meetings and one is for registration-based meeting for people who are not very comfortable with open discussions. And also on demand, we have occasional or regular private meetings with any people. Please feel free to join if you want to discuss anything or just say hi to me or uh, ask me some questions or yell on me or say thank you to me. Also, we have the Google document and Google calendar for schedule of the meeting, so please take a seat if you did. And we also have a project website which we aim to collect every resource for daemon starters. That includes the news, uh, demonstration video, and usage guides. So if you have an interest in daemon, please feel free to follow this page because we lively update the page for news and we will update this page for the link to these slides, these slides too. So finally, this is the just one slide that I have to make this talk that is please 
make your voice. We prefer random evolution as a development strategy rather than intellectual design, and, and uh, you can make your voice to make the evolution path to be more closer to what you need. Please make your voice for your selfish purpose. And for that, you can report issues, uh, request some features, or do anything that, and also you can prioritize some of the to-do items based on the to-do items list, and you can send patches. So that was all in summary. Daemon is the efficient data access pattern snapshot generator, and people can optimize the system memory usage using that, and AWS Aurora Serverless V2 and SK Hynix HMSDK are using Daemon for project reclamation, and uh, CXL-based memory tiering, and daemon community is waiting for your voice. And if you want to start getting to daemon, please visit the project site. So that was all, and we have over four more minutes for questions. So do you have any questions? CXL memory uh, tearing, one case was early daemon process starting up. So what's the reason behind that? Early daemon, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so the, the, so I, I expect that the daemon can be uh, turned on always in the system. In that case, and then so some, in the systems, Lots of processes are running, and then so, and then there is uh, obviously some uh, cold memories, uh, cold data. So they can be they can be demoted uh, earlier than the the reclaim logic runs on, and then so in this case, and then so system always uh, 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 tries to uh, make some uh, some free spaces. In this case, and then so if you want to run some specific workload, and then there is uh, enough space. Uh, rather than uh, compared to the so the one is turned on, uh, turn, uh, turned off. So in that case, yeah, that is the expectation. Yeah, that is the reason. Yeah. Uh, what other kind of workloads have been uh, uh, tested for? What other kind of workloads uh, you have tested? Yeah, Redis is one. Yeah, sorry. We have only one mic. Yeah. So unfortunately, I haven't tested uh, much much of the other workload, and then so some. So the the reason why I chose the Redis is that that is the uh, very close to the real workload, and then so we have we also. I think I uh, thought about the running the some kind of uh, micro benchmarks, those kind of things, and then so I, I found that uh, that is very unrealistic. And then, as I mentioned, that the, the, the test was very extensive, and then so if I run some uh, test and it takes about five to five, uh, three to five days, and then so we don't have enough people to run the multiple uh, workloads, and then so we want we we. we, we Always want to uh, try to uh, test uh, uh, test it uh, with a more various uh, workloads as well. So, yeah, so far that is that is all. Yeah. Yeah, I got questions about uh, also about the workload. So, for the six memory, if if we you know if we use the same, uh, I mean same memory for the six memory and uh, the memory on the host, right? So the price is almost the same, right? Uh, so, w what's the what's the use case for for that? Yeah. So yeah, the six memory. If it use the DDR5 and the, the memory in the host also use the DDR5, the price is almost the same. Yeah. So, and then you introduce a uh, latency for the six memory, and the price we are and the the performance we are down, right? 
So what's the real benefit of, of that? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think uh, there is there is the issue, and uh, so you are you are right, and uh, so if we uh, uh, produce the CSM memory with the, uh, the same DDR5, and uh, the cost is a little bit more expensive. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know about the price, but uh, as far as I know, so we we, we also uh, plan to plan to prepare some uh, much core, uh, much more cost efficient. Uh, type of CXM memory and so I believe that the cost is very important because the, our Redis uh, evaluation was done uh, with the CXM memory with the DDR5 and then if the, the memory is uh, much cheaper and then uh, worse, worse performance and then the performance gap between the DRAM only and the CXM only goes uh, widen. So in this, in this case and then those kind of technique is very important, yeah. And then, so the the reason why CXM memory is needed, then the DIMM slots, uh, the the there is a limitation. Then, so if the if we want to expand more memories, and then so if the DIMMs are the fully occupied, and then so there's no way. And then in that case, and then so you can expand some memory through the the CXL interface. In that case, that is only one use case. And then there are other use cases as well, but uh, I don't work on that, so I can. I can uh, uh, talk about more about it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So, any final question? I think we are over time now. If not, I think Hongyu has made two perfect presentation so that there is no more questions. Of course, if you have any more questions, please find us from the hall and please feel free to ask us any questions. Thank you very much.